Right, the fire trucks are doing the water cannon. Who is that? Oh, yeah. no, it's my sergeant. Because if it dies, I can use it. Father of six, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What year did he did he die? Sixty-six. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I am Sergeant Hudson of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, United States Army, Guard of Honor, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The ceremony that you are about to witness is the changing of the guard. In keeping with the dignity of this ceremony, it is requested that everyone remain silent and standing.
Thank you. My name is Lillian Francis Maranan. I served in the Navy as a wave from January 1944 to August 1946. Best few years of my life. Wave, oh, when we got into World War II, they needed the men in service, so those who were doing desk jobs or other work that they could be replaced, the women replaced them. There was a woman's auxiliary, the United States Navy. And as soon as the war was over, it was disbanded. My name's Marika Wagner, and I was a POW during World War II. Uh, was with the Japanese concentration camps. I was in nine in uh, different islands of Indonesia. We, I was not a veteran. I, was, as I said I'm a POW, and I was really born in Holland. And my mother only went to the mother country to give birth, but my home was really in Indonesia. And uh, we were private citizens, and the Japanese start to infiltrate coming down to Indonesia. And the rest has more or less been history. As I said, nine different camps. We were strictly women and children. The men were in other camps. Uh, I never did send the Japanese Christmas cards after that. <laughs> On our flight, Central Florida, we told you we had a little event that we were going to carry off at the gate, and this is it. And we hope it's another surprise that you're all going to enjoy. One of the things that we hear from all of you that serve, especially 
about when you were away from your family and your homes, one time in the service that you did enjoy while you were away from your family and your homes, was mail call. <laughs> so we have put together a little personal mail call for each and every veteran on our trip today. We contact the veteran's family, unbeknownst to the veteran, so they send us the mail. They, they get a hold of neighbors and loved ones, and then we hand it out in mail call. My name is William C. Hale. I'm a Korean veteran. I landed at Incheon one night, 1951, and I was assigned to Battlefield Illumination up north of 38th Parallel. And I was there for 10 months up there. And then uh, they uh, dropped a mortar in there and knocked me down, and uh, luckily I wouldn't uh, hurt much. But uh, after that, they wanted me to stay over another term. And I told them, I said, no, these people don't like me over here. So I headed back home. My name is Phil Johnson. I served in World War II in the Navy. I was on a large carrier, the, the Saratoga, and uh, I uh, I had one bad day. That was at Iwo Jima when we got hit by kamikazes. But I'm alive and I I'm well, and I'm grateful for being in this country. My name is Ford Clayton. And I've had an awesome trip with the uh, honor flight. And uh, matter of fact, we did so much, I'm ready to get on the plane and take it easy. <laughs> but uh, it was really awesome. And how everybody meets, meets us at the airport, even little kids come up and shake your hand. And I thought that was really something. And I enjoyed it. Ellis Saxon, LST 813. Uh, World War II, and I've had a great time today. And I can't believe this mail call. Been, t been well, t been well taken care of. Who's your guardian today? My son Randy. And and Randy had a, a, a son in on a submarine. Uh, he had a son on a submarine Alaska. I, I, I am Robert Dupont. I served in World War II. I served in the Pacific. Oh, I had a terrific day. And I think this is one of the best days of my life. Going through the airport with all the people, the way they treated us, it was terrific. I don't think I'll ever experience anything like that again. I love this world. It's great. God bless you all. Thank you. My name is Delbert Dillon. I served in the Army, 14th Armored Division, 94th Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron Mechanized Group E, and I was in combat through Europe. Who's your guardian today? It's my granddaughter, my precious granddaughter. I'm Herb Soybert, 99 years old. I served in World War II in the Army Air Corps, and then uh, later in the uh, U.S. Air Force. Uh, my uh, overseas time in uh, World War II was in the CBI, India. Uh, I was in the first ferrying group. Uh, that included the 14th uh, first of all, the uh, Flying Tigers, and then the 14th Air Force. Uh, I had a great time today. It was a 
a very full day, but it was very well organized, and I'll remember this the rest of my life if I live another 100 years. Thank you very much, the Honor Flight Volunteers. Yes, my name is Herschel J. Schick. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I served in World War II of the European Theater of Operation. I was in France, England, and Germany. Was wounded in November the 14th, 1944. My name is Mel Franzen, and I'll be 82 on June 20th, which is in a couple of weeks. I was uh, raised in South Carolina. I love Clemson. I loved aviation, flew that, flew airplanes all my life. My name is Arlen Bussey. I'm 82 years old and served in Korea with the U.S. Marine Corps, 13th Regiment Artillery, and uh, came back to a wonderful welcome in San Diego in 1955. Well, my name is Don Taylor, and I was in the Korean War. And uh, I live in Deland. I'm 84 years old, and this was a really wonderful day. And I'd like to thank all you guys that helped us today. It was wonderful. Thank you. If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bellow Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Porkchop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Treptow, who left his job in a small town barber shop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy artillery fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. On the flyleaf, under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, 
they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. We will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans.